Okay, welcome back to Introduction to Sociology. And uh, in this short video, we are going to talk about three major theoretical approaches in the field of sociology. Now, theory is a really important part of this field of study because theory is based on research. And the reason why theory is, is so important and perhaps exciting is that over time we do all this research on society and we're able to come to some really strong understanding about society. And so we, we have a really strong foundation in theory in saying this is how society is organized, this is how society operates, okay? So three major theoretical approaches. And what you can see down here and right there is what we talked about last time. And I'm just going to leave that on the screen. You might not be able to see it entirely clearly, but those are the, the social institutions that we talked about at the top, and then groups, and then individuals at the bottom. And I just want to leave that, that there as a point of reference as we talk about the three major theoretical approaches. Because these three major theoretical approaches that we're going to talk about briefly are certainly going to be describing what you see in the uh, image below, what we talked about in the first lecture. So the first theory that I want to mention is structural functionalism. Structural functionalism. And you can see the root words here of structure and functional. And I mean, I think a, a, an understanding about, you know, those words, you know, can help us look here at structure and generally having an understanding that this theory means that structure works together to make things functional. And to get a little bit more into the definition of structural functionalism, it says that it's a theoretical perspective that promotes it sees society promoting solidarity and stability. And this theoretical approach, you might be able to think of how this is accurate or maybe how it's inaccurate, and that's okay. You know, three major approaches, and there's all kinds of, of approaches that have been built from these, each of these three approaches. So there's a lot of different ways of looking at, again, social and individual phenomenon. But as we mentioned in the first video talking about family and the economy, I mean, you can go into a lot of detail as for examples of how society, right? How the social institutions work together, work together to promote solidarity and stability. So for example, in terms of the government, education and the economy, um, I'm paying off financial aid loans, student loans. If I didn't have those student loans, then I wouldn't have been able to go to college, right? And so that is a, a mixture of, of the government and, and, the, and education, right? But I ask this question, why, do, why does the government make money available for people to go to college? And oftentimes when I ask students that, one of the first things that comes to mind is so they can make money off people. And yeah, that is one perspective. But why is the government, now don't think Republican, Democrat, that's not where we're at with this. In terms of government promoting solidarity and stability in society, well, we know in the 21st century, stable societies usually have some degree of financial stability. Well, how do we achieve financial stability in society? Well, people have to have jobs and they have to be able to work. And many of you, watching this video are students taking this class and you're probably enrolled in college to get an education because that is an important part of maintaining financial stability over your life, life course. So the government also provides loans to help increase the economy, to help people maintain financial stability so they are not relying on the government for financial stability. So, I mean, that's just one example, but that's structural functionalism. See society as, you know, parts working together, right? 
social institutions working together to promote solidarity and stability in society, okay? The next theory, well, before I go any further, is this a macro or micro level theory? Is it, you know, at the top here where social institutions are or more at the bottom here where individuals are? It is one that's at the top here of social institutions, right? It's a macro level theory. So we're gonna put macro over here, all right? The next theory, all right, is called social conflict. Social conflict theory, social conflict approach. Now this is an interesting one, okay? It sees society as an, an arena of inequality generating conflict and change, okay? Wow, and so there are some central concepts that are a part of social conflict theory. Race, race and ethnicity, gender, social class, sexuality, those are all fundamental part of social conflict and social class, okay? So let me write those down. Race, gender, social class, and sexuality. Now in our course, in my classes, we will talk about each of these uh, in Introduction to Sociology. In, in, any sociology class I teach. We talk about these, okay? Now this again sees society as, you know, there's a lot of conflict going on. Now what's really at the root of social conflict theory is power, okay? Power, let's write this in big letters, hopefully you can see that, power, okay? So how do people get power? You know, how, is our, how does our society frame power in terms of race? How does it frame power in terms of gender, social class, sexuality, and why is power important? And so here's where it gets a little interesting. Is social conflict theory, social conflict approach, is it a micro level theory down here as we think about individuals or is it a macro level theory? Well, it could be both depending on what you're talking about. So for example, has the United States government ever had policies that promoted discrimination? Absolutely. Whether it's in terms of race, whether it's in terms of gender, whether it's in terms of social class or sexuality. That's a macro level consideration, right? Macro. How does the macro level affect the individual? And how, how do what individuals do affect our narrative and our understanding of society? Now, when we focus on individuals and how individuals working together affecting society, that's the micro level approach, right? But social conflict could be a macro level approach or a micro level approach. And on the micro level, how, is, how does how you relate to one another uh, play out in terms of conflict. Now, uh, some of you probably have uh, a partner, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a spouse. And I can ask you, does power ever play into the relationship that you have with one another? And if you have a partner, you're doing this right now. <laughs> yes, it does. How do you balance and navigate power in a relationship? Are strong relationships, in order to have a strong relationship, is it important to have an understanding about each other's approach to power and what each other wants and needs? Absolutely. Absolutely, right? And there's all kinds of other examples that we could talk about, and we will over the course of the semester. But again, this one, it has macro and micro considerations, okay? Now then, the next the third theoretical approach that I want to introduce you to starting out here in the semester is symbolic interactionism. 
Now, I encourage students, hopefully I've got enough room here, but symbolic interactionism. I encourage students to think about society from this perspective early in the semester. And most people will understand society from the micro level point of view. And that's what this approach is. So we're gonna write micro over here. And so I think it's easier for people starting out studying sociology to think about society in terms of themselves. Because we are products of social experience. That's a very important thing to to start to think about. We are a product of social experience. And what does that social experience look like? Well, family is a really important part of that. I've mentioned to you that I have a young daughter and certainly how she interacts with her brother and her sisters and her mother and father, her family members, and then how she interacts with people in preschool or in elementary school, how important are the teachers and interactions that she has at an early age for the development of herself. Those are micro level phenomena, okay? And so how does the interactions I have in the workplace matter to who I am? How does the interactions I have uh, when I drive on the street? I mean, are there any, are there any, you know, important considerations when I'm driving on Frederica Street. And you may be like, what are you talking about? How do you interact with people when you're in one car and they are in another? Think about that. And so now we're, we're getting into, you know, symbolic interactionism in, in terms of more of a, a, a group consideration. So I'll, I'll, since we're on this, I'll just tell you real quick where I'm going with this. In order to drive, do you have to have, do you have to agree to some conditions about driving? Do you have to agree that you're gonna abide by the traffic rules and regulations on the road? So when I'm driving on Frederica Street, I'm interacting with people that I don't know, but how am I interacting with them? Well, we have a common space that we're sharing. And I expect that they stay in their lane and they expect that I stay in my lane. So we don't have to always be talking with somebody and seeing eye to eye with somebody, looking somebody into the face. I'm looking into a camera right now, but maybe you think I'm looking right into your eyes. I mean, we're interacting, but we're not here together, physical person to physical person. So social interaction can take place in ways beyond the physical you know, relationship that people have with one another. And that kind of gets into talking about virtual reality a little bit, okay? Uh, that's an interest of mine, and I'll share some of that, and we'll cover some of that in the coming days. Um, but uh, you can also take social interaction in the spring, and we do have a whole section, a whole a part of the semester devoted to social media, social networking, the virtual reality. Okay, I'm on my soapbox. I'll step back. Okay. So we haven't gotten to a definition yet. So symbolic interactionism. It sees society as the product of the everyday interactions of individuals. And let me clarify a few points here now again. If you can't read that perfectly, it's in your book. And you should have your book open when you do these lectures, when you're watching these. It's gonna help you tie things together. Having the book open isn't enough, but you know to read that material and to read along with that. Okay, but let's clarify something about the society is the product of the everyday interactions of individuals. So this does not mean that I wake up in the morning and how I interact with people over the course of the day is my reality and then I go to bed and it ceases to exist. And then when I wake up in the morning, the next morning, it starts all over anew. No, it's not anew. So I am the product of my everyday interactions over time. Okay, and that's kind of, a, when I think about it, that's kind of a lot to think about. 
you know, how do my memories affect who I am in terms of who I am today? I mean, some people, you know, want to forget who they were as a young person. Some people, you know, have a, a need, understandably so, to reform how they were when they were younger and to become different as an adult. Some people as an adult are quite different than they were when they were younger. But all of those experiences form who you are as a person. And we call that the self. We're going to really cover that a lot more and go into detail in that in the chapter on socialization. Okay, so three major theoretical approaches, structural functionalism, macro theory, social conflict approach, which has a lot of different theories you know, within that approach. Theories related to race, sex, gender, ethnicity, social class, sexuality. Social conflict approach can be a macro or micro level theory, depending on what phenomenon you're examining. It's got a lot to do with power, really important part of that approach, understanding power in society. And then symbolic interactionism is a micro level theory. And uh, yeah, there we go. All right, so that's it for this, uh, this uh, short video about the three major theoretical approaches in sociology. Thank you for listening and watching.